my beautiful human, Tina Constant here. Welcome to Waffle Free Storytelling. And, oh, I almost don't have to say it, the jibber jab is at the end. So we're jumping right into this week's story, which is all about how chameleons and many other things came to be. <laughs> Oh, it's one of my favorite types. This story goes back to the dawn of time when, as you know, the gods were still working out where things were and where they belonged. Now, at that time, there were two young gods and they were giving the job of assigning color to creation. Both of these gods, a sister and a brother, took on the job with relish and not, I have to tell you, a little bit of competition. <laughs> They were both eager to prove themselves and be the one who stood higher and above the other. Now, on the first day of the job, the sister, her name was Orsa, looked over the valley and she held her palette and she started to paint. She used rich, warm and vibrant colors from violet to crimson to lavender to peach. And like an artist, she painted the meadow. Her brother, his name was Kryomi, not to be undone, took on the deserts with vast breaststrokes of red and orange and brown and black and okra. He created a masterpiece out of those dry spaces. The older gods watched the siblings color in the world and they were amazed. What started out bland and insignificant ended up striking and exquisite just because of a splash of well-placed puce. Soon the whole world was colored except for one thing. Stretching across the horizon, north to south, east to west, the sky was too big for just one of the siblings to tackle on their own and they soon recognized that they were going to have to work together. So they stood side by side, their palettes in their hands, their brushes ready, and they began to paint. But where one put streaks of yellow, the other covered it with green. Where one put a layer of orange, the other covered it with purple, and on and on they went until the sky was so layered in colors that it turned a deep, thick, dark blanket of black that seemed to go on for eternity. The gods looked on in horror, even more so when in a fury the siblings turned on each other's work. Kryomi threw brown colors all over the green that Orsa had painted and also retaliated by littering Kryomi's okra with pink. Like children throwing tantrums in a paint box, they spat at each other's work until finally Mother Nature, the keeper of all things, rose from the depths of the earth and commanded them to stop. The siblings trembled where they stood. The gods would punish them for destroying their work, but Mother Nature, she would crush them. In an instant, they each pointed to each other, each laying blame away from themselves. He started it, Orsa said. She did it first, Kryomi replied. For a long time, Mother Nature said nothing. When she finally spoke, all of creation trembled. I will give you one chance, she said. Here are two colors, white and red. Do something magnificent and you will live. Break these two last colors and you will be judged by me and me alone. You have one cycle of the moon to do your best work. Well, the siblings put down their brushes. <laughs> the black around them was so thick they could hardly see. Then, like they both had the same idea at the same time, they each picked up their brush, dipped it in the white paint, and dotted the black with specks that gleamed and shone bright enough to give them just enough light to see. In that light, they huddled close and they talked. While they talked, they put a tiny dot of precious white here and a streak of deep red there. They even tried painting the moon first in red and then in white and then they changed their minds and turned to red again <laughs> with time running out they finally decided that white was the way to go but in their hurry they left two craters 
a deep crimson. All this time, the siblings kept talking, but for the life of them, they couldn't decide what to do with these magnificent colors, and their time was almost up. Mother Nature was soon to return to pass judgment. With just a minute to spare, the twins shut their eyes, the sister put her brush in the white, and the brother put his brush in the red, and then they swapped. When the white and the red melded and flowed together, instead of the dark that they had creating by mixing every other color, the white and the red fused and created a soft and perfect glow, the likes of which they had never seen. Astounded by the new creation, the twins looked up to see Mother Nature rise once more from the earth. She looked at the twins and what they had done, and she smiled. I will call the blackness night, she said. The glow of the light will be the stars that will stretch between the worlds. She looked at the color the siblings had created together, and she dipped her finger in it and streaked it across the horizon on either side of the night. Sunrise and sunset, she said as the sky lit up. Then Mother Nature looked at the moon and she saw their indecision. <laughs> you can have both, she laughed. White moon at night and a red moon twice a year, one for each of you. Then she leaned close to the twins who stood hand in hand, covered in paint of every color and shade. <laughs> to you, I give the greatest gift of all. She touched the twins softly on their cheeks and in a moment, they went from children of the gods to beings of the earth. To the pure delight of the siblings, they watched the color of their skin change according to where they stood. When they stood on green, their skin changed to emerald. When they stood on the desert flowers, their skin turned crimson. The siblings ran into the world, becoming every color of every season and relishing in the pure joy of the rainbow. <laughs> so, now you know how day and night came to be of how the stars were formed, and of the origin of sunrise and sunset. You also know why there are two red moons every year, and above all, above all, you know who the chameleons are. So the next time you see one, say thank you. These siblings are the reason we have color in the world. <laughs> all right. Oh, that's it. Oh, my goodness. All right. Hey, what are you doing today? What are you up to? What wild, weird, strange, odd, unexpected thing are you going to be doing? Uh, just curious. <laughs> so, hey, I'm going to see you next week. Uh, not sure what the story is. Let's see what pops out of the universe, yeah? Uh, in the meantime, I have one of my wee dogs looking at me, trying very hard to get another biscuit. I think he's going to win. <laughs> so have a splendid day. Have a beautiful day. And uh, I will see you next time for more waffle-free storytelling. And oh, hey, drop around to tinaconstant.com. Uh, that's constant with a K. If you haven't joined the fireside, then there's a mailing list there. Just fill in your details and say hi. All right. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye now.